show I should eat before I do this show because I'm starving after what she did, Christine Cushing. We've got lots to eat. We've got lots to eat. Here with Easy Garden Inspired Ideas, perfect for a family Easter party, Sebastian Sentner. Thank you. Clever, Sebastian Sentner. Happy Easter. Thank you, you too. So you're having people over and you want to set up a little buffet. Yes, what we did was we kind of did like an afternoon buffet, so it's not really meant as a full meal. It's sort of like a, a snack idea. You can have the family over. Uh, you can have, it's kid friendly as well, because obviously, you know, it's Easter weekend, so you spend lots of time with the family, lots mm -hmm. of little guys running around. Mm -hmm. So we did a little bit of both. What we did, first of all, is we took the whole concept of Easter, and of course, this time of year, with the spring, everything's sprouting, we're getting those great colors coming out, so we yeah. wanted to do the same thing on our table. Obviously, uh, forgetting the fact that it might snow tomorrow, so that we'll, we'll not even think about it. But you'll have all of this to keep you nice and fresh. Or remember that it, we, we are still in spring. So yeah. what we did was, lots of colorful, we did, the, first of all, the crudités. Love doing crudités, but the thing about crudités is this. You see crudités in the grocery store. You know, there's the, there's the, the cucumbers, the carrots, the traditional things. There's so many other things you can do mm -hmm. with crudités, including using some of the more colorful fruits. So we have, for example, the patty pan squash. We have the different types of peppers and the different colors. And using glass bowls allows you to do something that's a little bit more interesting. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, everything's cut for dipping. So You're going to dip that? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Sure. <laughs> they're not hot peppers, don't oh, worry. Oh, they're not. Okay, they're, yeah. oh, oh. No, no, they're not hot peppers. Yeah. Um, but but I, love, I love how you arranged it, though. That's really yeah. cool. So yeah. everything's different levels, yeah. lots of color, et cetera, et cetera. And we even found, and these are a little bit more difficult. Oh, my gosh. The Is colored cauliflower. Cute? It's a Barbie doll cauliflower. Look. <laughs> okay. We've got a matching purple one right here. Look, let me see. Uh, those are so cool. How are do they, they do that? They're actually grown that way. They're not dyed. And they're special ones. Have you ever, anybody heard of Peruvian blue peppers? This like they're, a, they're, yeah. they're uh, excuse good. me, yeah. Peruvian blue potatoes. Peruvian blue potatoes are actually blue. Well, they're starting to have all these different hybrids of vegetables. Cool. that have these colors. Yeah, it's really nice. Cauliflower is great. Really nice. Okay, so let's talk about... Okay, the so then we here. also have, obviously, all of our one bites. Now, this is all about the fact that, you know, with a small side plate, or no plate at all, mm -hmm. you can come up to the buffet, grab something, go back, etc., etc. It's not about a traditional buffet. It's more of a food station. Mm -hmm. Okay? So mm -hmm. what we have here is sweet pea shooters. And what we did was something called a vichyssoise, which is French for cold soup. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, a vichyssoise is potato. Right. But, again, for the season, we did a sweet pea. We did it with a little bit of green, so obviously it brings out a little bit of the color. And as well, we did something that's very simple, and you can just have a single sure. serving. So did you cook up the soup and then cool it down and then yes. put it in there? Yes, we did. So you, if you just typically you'll cook the soup and then chill it afterwards. Yeah. Uh, except for, for example, a gazpacho. Gazpacho is different. Then you can just make it cold right away. Right, right. That's right. Okay, I like the look of that. That's okay. really So nice. we continue with little asparagus tartlets. Asparagus are great this time of year. And my favorite is I love caprese salads. Okay, hang on one second, because yep. we want to take a look at this. So you just bought, pre-bought these? Well, the, actually, the tartlets you can buy pre-done. We actually make ours, but you can you buy them that? nowadays. They come in different shapes. You yeah. can get little squares. What's in there that, to keep the uh, asparagus? We do a little bit of boursin cheese. Okay. And then it just has a bit of asparagus as well. And the That's... asparagus is actually grilled, pan Girl. fried. Okay, love that. Yeah. I love that. Looks like a little cactus in a... In a, exactly. in a... Less prickly. <laughs> That's right. And then let's talk about how cute this is. So these are um, cherry tomatoes and bocconcini, so a caprese salad. But again, in the idea of having everything as single bite, single portion, you can have one of these little items. Oh, careful on the tomato there. There you go. Um, and what will happen is we present it with little forks usually, and you can pop them in, and they're simple and That's easy, really et cetera. Cute. And you can do your drizzle last minute. Right. And, and these t are these deviled eggs? They're deviled eggs. Okay. So... Um, <laughs> They're really good, actually. I know they are. I know. Double eggs are so... No, no, they're so good. Oh, we're applauding double eggs. Yeah. And look how cute they look like little chickpeas. Yeah, well, we sort of, we have some fun with them. What's your, what's your recipe for deviled eggs? Okay, so deviled eggs, first of all, everybody know how to hard boil an egg? Yeah. Okay, so basically what we try and do with deviled eggs is we try and do the mixture a little bit different. So we actually put a little bit of saffron in uh -huh. as well, adds a little bit of spice. And depending, this is kid-friendly, so we kept it kind of... Uh, moderate in, yeah. the, in the different right, flavors, right, right. but also uh, any type of pepper or, for example, basil. You use a little bit of basil, basil pesto as well, and it just adds a bit more flavor that to it. That would be good. Just a little bit goes a long yeah. way again. You know, the, the, something that we grew up with in, uh, in, in France was they used to serve basically hard-boiled eggs with mayonnaise on them. Mm -hmm. That was like so basic, but everybody just fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of sort of the French version of the uh, deviled egg. Right. Deviled eggs are so underrated. And if you want to make them really, really elegant, you can also get little quail eggs nowadays. 
little bit harder to work with, yeah, yeah. but those are really cute as well. Those are cute. So what did you do to decorate this? What did you use? Okay, so in this case, what we did is we so used cute. two little black peppers and a ah. cherry pepper, uh, excuse me, a um, uh, uh, red cherry spice. Okay. Okay. Um, or pink peppercorn will work as well. Yeah, so that adds spice to it. Exactly. You're... Okay, very good. I like that. That looks really nice. Yeah. And these are little place cards. We did place that's, cards. That's an empty shell. So what we did is dollar store eggs, really, really simple. All we did was we cut a little slit on the top, just like that. And we add the place cards, so they can either be used if you're doing a dinner party, or if you want to, in this case, we're sort of um, giving them little signs for each of the food stations. Very nice. Very nicely done. And, then, and I just want to make mention of a couple of things here. I like how you did uh, with the straws and the knives and the forks. Well, how did you make now, that, that color? Okay, so what we did is we actually painted the inside of them. Oh, I thought so. So it's, so it's really simple, actually. You put some paint in, close it, shake, shake it, it, and you're done. Wow. That... If you actually replace the paint with vodka, you can make a martini. <laughs> now let's talk about these cute little nests. Can you see this? I don't know if, if, if Bob can see this. There you go. Can we see that? Can you see these cute little So what we did was we did two kind of fun Easter do-it-yourself or kind of activities that you can do with the kids. Yeah. So what we did here is these are butterscotch nests. Um, they're typical. They're little Asian um, deep-fried um, noodles. Right. So you can buy them. They're already deep-fried. The nice thing about this is there's no cooking required. So we basically take a butterscotch sauce, we mix it in with it, make the little nests, and then leave them to dry. Mm -hmm. They dry very quickly and they harden, and you can do this with kids because you don't have to turn the oven on. Right. That looks so cute, too. Of course, I'd be eating all those little, little well, eggs. Well, we got lots over here I for know. you to eat. Okay. But I just want to make mention of this, too. This is adorable. Isn't that Come cute? Come on. It's a fun little gift for kids to leave with or, when they arrive, get them nice and Orange popped up on yeah, sugar. you can do that yourself. <laughs> Why not? Now, let's talk about this. I had no idea. I know what these are because we love these. Yeah. But I had no idea that the bowl that it was in was. Okay. Yes, did you yeah. know that? I would have been gnawing on that thing. Okay. Not at all. But you got to be careful. That's why we're going to show you how to do it. So before yeah, you. I want this. Okay. All right. So talk to me how to make this. So this was so really this fun. We actually did this a few years ago for a, a client of ours who was doing a huge candy station for their son's. Um, uh, I think it was 14th birthday. Yeah. And we came up with this idea that they wanted chocolate bowls. Well, chocolate bowls are not easy to make, and no. th that's the problem. The kids will start actually eating them, and then everything falls apart. What a request. So what we did here was we took a standard glass bowl, Yeah. and what you want is you want a bowl that preferably has a straight edge to it, so it's not indented. Right. Okay, and this actually looks like it has divots on the inside. Uh, on the, sorry, it has divots, but they're actually on the inside. Okay. So this is nice and flush. Smooth. Then what we did was we take our Kit Kats, and we use a little bit of marzipan. Now, you can also use ice frosting for cake frosting. The thing about marzipan is marzipan's great because it keeps the moisture, so it's a little bit more sticky. But marzipan is made from almonds. So you want to make sure nobody has an almond allergy, which is still Good point. a lot more rare than a peanut allergy. But still, you need to let But you want to check. Know, right? And you can always use, if you're, not, if you're worried about that, just to be safe, you can use frosting. So what we're going to do is basically put them on like this. We did wash our hands before. Yeah. Okay, and then you're just going to squeeze them on one at a time. There you go. Nice and tight. Now, one of the, one or two of them will have a little to teeth mark on it because it could have make it scallop. Exactly. <laughs> could be a scallop. All right, so I got that one. And if okay. you keep passing them to me, what we're going to do yeah. is we're going to quickly... No, I'll keep passing because you, you just keep going. Here, I'm going to be the assistant surgeon. All right, there you go. Okay. How come you're thin? Aha. Uh -huh. How come? That's a secret. Really? Because yeah. you're around food all the time. Oh, I'm making a mess. And now. it's okay. See, you know you're I got, uh, yeah, I know. But and you know what? Um, it's because this is hard since we started the show. Right? I know, it started a little bit. Yeah. But quite frankly, it's also, I mean, I don't eat all this stuff every day. If no. I did, well. Well, well now you're trash. Well, that's just too bad. I guess what? <laughs> uh, mm. well. All right. So, use the marzipan while it's fresh. Right. That's the number one. Right, it, because it's light in here. Oh, 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 oh. Mm. Make it hard. Okay. Yeah, this is what marzipan looks like. Okay. Looks like this. Mm -hmm. But here's the other trick. When it does harden, they will start to come apart. Hence, why we use the bow. Right. So, and also, obviously, kids will start pulling at it. And as mm -hmm. soon as you've got a couple of them gone, thing all comes apart. So use a ribbon at the end. You want to put the marzipan on. It, makes, it takes about five minutes to do it. Tie the bow, and then it's good set for the day. Delicious. <laughs> All I can say is so Speechless. Great, great ideas. Thank you to Sebastian. You're the best. Uh,